Hey everyone, Andrew here, Melbourne Superman, and it's time for another review. It's not a suit review. Today, I'm going to do another shoe review. So this is my second shoe review that I've done. You know, obviously this is more in line with the fitness part of my, my podcast, as I am, of course, a runner, OCR, uh, obstacle course racer, and uh, sort of ultra marathoner, all that good stuff. I'm not a professional by any means. I just basically call it like I see it. So just like my suit reviews, this, there's, you know, you got to take things at your own risk. Uh, make sure that you go into any sort of, especially if you're a runner and you're looking for a, sh a new shoe, go get fitted, go see a running uh, physiotherapist or a myotherapist or an osteo or just a running shoe store and see what shoe might work best for you. So, of course, as always, if you do like the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, ding, ding, so that you can really help me out with the channel so we can reach as many people as possible. So, the shoe that I'm going to review today this is uh, one of the shoes that is regularly in my arsenal. So I've got a few, um, you know, so obviously the last one I reviewed the Vibram Five Fingers. So those are just my everyday walking shoe. I don't really do a lot of running in those, but I do also run in my Asics. I run in Nikes. And so these particular shoes are the one of the super shoes that I own, one of the pairs of shoe, super shoes that I own. So these, we're gonna take a look at the Alpha Fly Next Percents. So not to be confused with the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2, which I also own, which I'll review at some point in the future as well. So in terms of Nike, I have the Nike Vaporflies. I have the Nike Vaporflies Next Percents. I have the Alpha Flies. I think the original Alpha Flies, I've got the original Next Percent and I have the original Next Percent 2. So the reason that I'm going to start with these shoes is because they are fresh in my mind. I just completed a workout in them yesterday. You know, normally I would have completed this type of workout in the Next Percent 2, but this particular case I, I had left my Next Percent 2s at Aaron's house. So these ones I'm going to review are the Alpha Fly Next Percents. So these are the Akedon versions. So this that's just the color scheme. So they're kind of like fiery, sunsetty, uh, really, really a good looking shoe. So getting right into it. So basically the Alpha Fly shoe and uh, all the Nikes sort of use the Zoom X technology. They are a super shoe. So that means they are they have the super foam. That means they are uh, injected with certain types of gases to help you get. Uh, a certain type of return back when you run. So they're called super shoes because apparently, theoretically, they're supposed to help you run faster, farther, longer, harder than another shoe. Now, what I will say about the Alpha Flies in particular is that they are a shoe that do help me go harder, faster, longer in terms of what I can do. So basically, when I wear the Alpha Fly, sometimes I feel like I should not be able to do what I can do in these shoes as late in the run. So the, the run that I went on yesterday, this particular run was a 15 minute warm up, And then basically what I did was 400 meters hard tempo and then 400 meter float recovery. So a float recovery, that basically means you're going slower than your hard tempo, but you're not really going slow at an easy pace. So for me personally, my hard tempo pace is about uh, a 630 to a 640 mile. And then my recovery pace was at, which isn't really a recovery pace, is about an eight minute mile. So not a, like a big difference in paces, but eight minutes is not an easy mile for me. So to give you an idea, my easy miles, I generally run at about a 10 minute mile. My marathon, my last marathon, I ran at about an 820 mile. Uh, my 5K is about 20 to 21 minutes. Um, my 10K is about 43 to 44 minutes. Half marathon, 140 to 145 and so on and so forth. So this particular workout was a, was a good size workout. So I did the 15 minute warm up, 400 meters hard, 400 meters re, uh, float recovery times 16. So in total, eight miles of effort, and then another 15 minutes of um, of a cool down. And that gave me about 11 and a bit miles for the workout yesterday. So I did that all in this shoe. This shoe, okay. So starting off, this shoe is basically this is something that is made for a neutral runner. Uh, I had run in um, supportive shoes, stability shoes for a long time. And I found that again, I was getting trouble with my knee and everything. My Mayo and a running shoe store eventually just said, dude, why don't you just try running in neutral shoes and you'll probably be better. And so since I've been starting using the Nike range, uh, I've been, you know, and the Vibrams, of course, I've been doing a lot better. So this shoe is made for people who maybe supinate or are neutral midfoot to four foot strike runners. 
Um, these are also made for fast running. So you don't want to wear these on your easy days, right? You don't want to wear them on your recovery days. These are made for fast, longer runs. Um, not really great for walking in. And they are they're a good cushion. They're a good cushion shoe. So actually, these would be great if you're running on the treadmill even, uh, and you know, you're feeling that impact of the treadmill. So these are good. The thing I will say, um, yes, it is cushioned. Yes, it provides a lot of good bouncy maximum cushion. You need to like not transition to a shoe like this right away because you will find that your ankles, maybe your Achilles aren't as supported as they should be or as they could be. Uh, I do find that if I'm not, if I'm, if I run too much in a super shoe like this, that I'll, f and I'm not stretching properly, or if I haven't worked my calves quite right, uh, I'll find that my ankle, um, ankles, uh, and Achilles might give me a little bit of grief. Um, in terms of sizing, it is true to its size. You know, I, I wear a size, uh, I wear a size 11 running shoe. I probably get away with wearing a size 11 alpha fly uh, next percent. Uh, I generally go with the 10 and a half uh, because it's just a little bit more snug because these do, they, 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 you can slip in these as in your, your foot can move a little bit, which brings me to that, like the mid foot right in the middle here, it's a bit tight, but the rest of it, there's a little bit of movement there. So you might want to, you might want to go a half size smaller uh, or true to size. You know, I, I wear a half size small, but you know, I'm sure 11 would be just fine. So going back to what I was saying about the calf and the heel, the reason is because this, the stack height is uh, 39 millimeters and in the heel and 35 millimeters in the forefoot. So that's, that's a four millimeter drop. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of load off the calf for you. Um, so if you are accustomed to a higher drop that gives you a little bit more uh, support there, maybe not a great shoe for you, but it's definitely worth a try. Uh, it is only, I would say, a race day shoe. So like I said, it's not it's not for slow running. Yes, I wear it in my workouts, but only my fast workouts. If they're like race specific type of workouts, that's, that's what this shoe is for. In terms of how it feels and how it goes on a run, so there's a couple things. A, it's not like, like I said, because your foot moves around a little bit in there because of just how it's built, it's not great for like sharp turns. Um, the problem, the biggest problem though, is with that movement is, I don't know if you can see in there, but you see how the, um, the insert is kind of like it goes to the edge, but it doesn't, it's not quite, doesn't come up that well. Problem, biggest problem that I have with this shoe, and I don't encounter this in the vapor flies. I don't encounter it in the, uh, alpha flies next percent too, but this one, the next percent, because of that, I get the most, the most awful blood blisters when I'm like working hard in this shoe. Like uh, probably about, I don't know, including warm up, maybe like four miles into my 11 and a bit mile workout yesterday, I started developing right away like these big blood blisters and they hurt like hell. So it is something to keep in mind for this shoe is that it might not be a great long distance shoe if you're, if you've got sensitive skin, because these things, these blisters hurt like a lot. And uh, it's just, it's just not put together. I mean, it's put together well, but that's a big problem on the inside of this shoe is that that sort of edge with the insert and the shoe itself, it's just, it really rubs your foot hard. And it doesn't matter what socks I wear, I always end up with a blister after this shoe. And that's why, I mean, I don't generally wear it that often for that reason. Uh, I, I would wear it on like a fast mile maybe, uh, or up to, I'd probably wear it for a 5K. I'd probably wear it for a 5K, but I, I don't know that I would wanna wear it much longer than that. So uh, 5K, 3.1 miles, definitely 11 miles is too much in this shoe, in this particular shoe. It is really light. Like it looks like a big shoe, but it's like, it's like light. Uh, it is uh, 264 grams, so it's about nine ounces. Um, and they're not, they're, I don't think they're the lightest shoe that I have, but they are, they are really light for what they are. So that, of course, helps with your, uh, your fatigue uh, later in the run if you do choose to wear these for a little bit longer. These shoes do have a little bit more durability than, say, the Vaporflies I found. Like, so I've got about, I don't know, I've probably got about 100 and... Mm, Probably about 150 miles in these ones. Uh, probably about 150 miles in these ones. And 
I feel like they're still they're still pretty solid to go. Whereas my vapor flies, if you get like 150 to 200 miles in those, it's kind of like it's kind of like time for a new shoe, which is kind of a bummer because all the vapor flies, the Zoom series, they do have like hefty price tags. These uh, were about, I think these ones were about 340 Australian. Uh, they're probably on sale now because they're not the newest and latest anymore, but 340 Australian, you kind of want a shoe that's going to last a little bit longer than, you know, 150 miles, but that's just the nature of the super foam. Unfortunately, it's not as stable as other things and just the way that they inject the gases into it uh, and the way that they, they make the, the cushion, it just doesn't last as long as it should. But it is, this, this shoe is pretty durable. Uh, so you can see, I mean, you can see the bottom, uh, there's not a lot of real, I mean, yeah, sure there's wear and tear, but there's not a lot of bad wear and tear. Um, you know, it's still, it's still got a decent amount of, I, I'd say I'm probably about halfway through with this shoe. So probably another 150, 200 miles, and then I'll, I'll retire this pair. Now, in terms of uh, how you are on the street and like some shoes you wear, depending on the terrain, they can slip a little bit. These are great. Like the grip here, they don't slip at all. Uh, assuming that you're landing on the forefoot, which you should probably be doing in shoes like this, like these are not a heel strike shoe. Uh, you're you're going to get, you're going to get some great, you're going to get some great grip. Um, I haven't really tested them on a real big incline, say like on a treadmill. So I don't know what the, the grip would be there. Uh, but certainly on the street, you're looking pretty good grip. Now, the other thing, the other thing is basically the heel slip. Like I was saying, the shoe moves around a little bit in there. So you kind of want to do one of the uh, lock laces. So basically to do a lock lace, um, you would, I don't even know if you can do it on this shoe, which is probably why I haven't done it. Uh, but normally you can do a lock lace. I'll, I'll probably do a video on explaining it, what that is, but to do a lock lace, it helps uh, stabilize your ankle in here. With these ones, I don't, you can't really do that because they don't have the extra hole up here, but there is a bit of moving. And again, that contributes to the, the blisters and everything. So keep that in mind. That said, it does have a little bit of an extra uh, cushion here, which I don't know if it really helps. My heels still kind of still move. Um, but you know, it's better than nothing. I can't imagine what it would be without that. So that's something. So yeah, final thoughts, uh, you know, for the price of the shoe, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, again, that's 340. That's Australian. I think they're probably cheaper. Well, us, they'd be around 280, I think. Uh, so that, that works out that computes, um, you know, for the price tag, they're fine. They're not my favorite shoe because of how they're built on the inside and the blisters that I can get with them. Uh, but they're certainly not my least favorite shoe. They're good for a short run. I don't generally like to wear them uh, longer than, uh, say, six or seven miles. And, you know, the cushion's great. You can feel it as soon as you slip them on that they're just, they're wanting you to go fast. I would not wear these in a marathon because of the blisters. Uh, I would not wear them for anything, anything longer, I don't think, than, I don't even know if I'd wear them for a 10K. So maybe before when I said six or seven miles, that's kind of, over exaggerating. I don't know. I probably wouldn't wear them for longer than a 5k, but you know, worth a shot. You know, again, if you're looking to change your shoes, go to a running store, go to a, a professional who can help you kind of assess what kind of shoe you might be, you know, you, you might be wanting to wear because that's where it all starts. But certainly I really enjoy the Nike line of their super shoes. So I'll, I'll review some more of them later on, but that's been my basic review of the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent, not to be confused with the Next Percent 2. So look, thank you so much for watching again. If you have enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notifications bell, ding, ding, and make sure you follow me on Melbourne Superman on Instagram, Melb Superman on Twitter, and follow this YouTube account. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.